So just testing if this works. And it seems like it does, great. Thank you so much. <coughs> just while we wait, I can say that uh, we're very lucky because we have the very best sound engineer in the building today. So I promise that'll be great. Yeah, we're very grateful. Okay, everyone, it's um, 4.15, and while people are getting seated, we'll, you know, carefully start. Um, I've said it to some of the ones that were earlier here. Uh, we have a very small survey. Uh, it's a bit more than 30 seconds, uh, someone says, but it's not long. Uh, we would really much like to get some feedback on uh, how people are using Gutenberg and the things to improve and, you know, get in touch with uh, all of you, basically whether or not you have been using Drupal Gutenberg uh, already. Um, in the end there is also an, uh, an, an option to leave your email address uh, and uh, so we can reach out and get in touch uh, in, uh, in some ways. Uh, we'll send out some uh, uh, questions maybe and uh, information about uh, new versions and these kind of interesting things. And it's very, very easy to opt out of that at any point. So, as we've said earlier, uh, we will do no Christmas letters, no uh, New Year's letters. Um, yeah. Okay, <coughs> then let's get started. So, we're talking about the Drupal Gutenberg uh, uh, editor today. 
we will look into a lot of uh, uh, new features that uh, is there. Uh, it will have a developer-oriented focus, I would say. We will give some demos and show some snacks related to that. Uh, and we'll also actual, actually go in and show some methods for the development and how we should get going. So let's start. Okay. So I'm Marco, uh, working with Drupal for more than 10 years now. Uh, I have a passion for future-oriented uh, technical solutions. Uh, that does the job. Uh, I'm usually deep into JavaScript and uh, PHP related work. Uh, we build things uh, that work effectively for the people that it's for, uh, either uh, as an end user or a web editor. I'm also doing some game development in my spare time uh, with little code as possible. So here's one of from uh, 13 kilobyte uh, competition back in 2016. You can Google it uh, uh, later on the break. Yeah. Uh, I'm Thor, Tor André Gretland. Uh, I uh, also work in Frontcom together with uh, Marco. Frontcom is an open source focused uh, digital uh, agency spread across Europe. Uh, our head office is located in Fredrikstein, Norway, where I'm usually at. Uh, we're about uh, 80 people now working on digital projects from strategy and design to implementation and maintenance. Um, and we do a lot of Drupal. Uh, but being uh, open source focused in general makes us good at choosing the right tech for the right projects and also gives us a lot of knowledge on how challenges are handled uh, differently in different open source communities. And that's how we found Gutenberg in the first place. Uh, we were trying to to find or even build, if we needed, uh, the absolute best editor and landing page builder on the market. Well, uh, long story short, why are we using Gutenberg a lot with our uh, clients currently? Well, because they love it and because it gives us a good business, uh, both for us and for the clients. The importance of good user experience is increasing. Uh, well, this is a couple of signs that we found in a hotel to help users find their room. Now, where would you go if you want to find room 4337? <laughs> and people don't humbly accept solutions they don't understand anymore. Well, my father does. He's uh, 79 years old and he will never own a smartphone for several reasons. Uh, he has one of these over there. It has a horrible user experience. You know, it's made for people like him, but it's very difficult. Uh, and uh, he also thinks, you know, this is very difficult. But he blames himself. You know, I, I, I don't have this confidence. And I believe that he is a part of the last generation ever that will keep blaming themselves for not understanding how things we build work. You know? In some situations, I'm, you know, reaching out to companies uh, that have some sort of service or product, saying that, you know, I'm trying to do this with your app here or this, but I'm not able to, you know, oh yeah, 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 you just need to, you know, click here, go in there, pull that down and go over here. And oh, yeah, you logged in with the Google account. Uh, yeah, yeah, but you also have another, yeah, okay, yeah, so log in with that instead. Yeah, right, okay, thank you. I was just, you know, uh, yeah, no, but problem solved, right? He told me how and it works. But I think we're done with that also. I mean, we, we can't keep you know, telling people to take the course or read the manual or things like that. We just need to inspire. Let's build things that people love. That's our vision also. Drupal should be the most user-friendly enterprise CMS out there. It should be easy to <coughs> use for those who own the Drupal sites. And through that, we started with the Gutenberg. So now, what is it anyway? Well, it's an editor and a landing page builder. And there's a lot of them out there. Um, and uh, there is also a, a good user interface to uh, add data to Drupal already. But sometimes we need more. And we see that very often we need more. For example, here's a very simple landing page builder, to the, no, a landing page to the left. And this is how it could look uh, in Drupal to the right. 
well, I know that there are also a lot of, you know, uh, even uh, better, more obvious ways to do this uh, currently. But uh, what we imagine then is that it should look, look probably something more like this. It's not perfect. This is just a demo site, you know, we're not working this on uh, every week. But it really does the job. You know, you can see that I've selected something in the middle there. Actually, I will show you how it works. Okay. So here it is. Um, I have a banner up here. I can uh, choose a couple of types of uh, background images. This is one for, uh, for cell phones and so on. I can move the, the content over here to the left. And here, you know, I'm just going in and, and typing what I need. Don't click the button, but it, uh, it works. Uh, I could paste the URL there, but I could also, you know, start typing some title of a node and it will live search and, and find my test here. Uh, on this um, uh, Gutenberg block here, and by the way, uh, when we've done sessions on Drupal Gutenberg earlier, we've been, you know, very much focusing on demos for, for you know, what you get out of the box. So this example is more like there is uh, some custom blocks here, and as you can see, they're obviously styled. So you know, yeah, <laughs> Google it <laughs> if you, <laughs> or now test it out yourself. That's better. Yeah. So uh, uh, I can choose some different uh, templates back here on how this should look. I'm going back to black here. Uh, and here for my, uh, this three column grid, I can do the same. Say that, you know, this should have this color, this should have this color, and then this over here. And then when I click one of them, I can also see what icon I have selected. And I, when I click around to play around with other ones, it's instantly updating. And of course here I could just, you know, work on the text in the same way as the other ones up there. Uh, here we have a um, uh, uh, background. It's actually a video. Can you see that's the video? Yeah, it's moving. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's say now that uh, same thing here. I'm working with text, uh, removing some words here and there. Uh, and then I can go over here and find a new video. So I'm borrowing this one. Thank you so much, Andrew. And then if you go back to Gutenberg, I'll just paste that ID in here. And what happens is that it starts playing. So I can just continue with my work and see how that looks straight in the editor. So here's another um, uh, Gutenberg block. It has a title in the top. I can work on that. And then it has some, well, you know, I can teasers going into it could be products or solutions or whatever. And uh, that's about it. Last thing I want to show you here is this block down here, which is quite simple and something that you use on a regular basis, I suppose. I can flip it as I want. And then, you know, the same kind of, you know, toggles and needs. So that's a, that's a quick, quick peek. Um, <coughs> and, well, who's using Gutenberg? Is this something you can you trust, you know, dare and go into? I would say yes. You know, it's, um, uh, it's about almost now 80 million websites uh, out there that is actively using this editor. It's in the WordPress communities, you know? So the numbers for Drupal are, are way smaller, obviously. Um, but uh, still, there are like almost 200,000 posts, pages created every day using this. So it's, you know, it's here to stay for a while, we can say that. <coughs> Uh, and the number, number currently on Drupal.org for a Drupal Gutenberg is about 3,000, I think. And uh, yeah, as usually, it's, it's probably a bit higher because, you know, for example, all of our sites that's using Drupal Gutenberg is not there because we have other systems to control updates and so on, and then it will be left out of the statistics. Okay, now let's get into it. Let's say now that you have a site, and um, it could be an existing one or a new one, but you want to go into the... Gutenberg ecosystem. So uh, you create a new content type for that and say, we'll, we'll do Gutenberg here. So let's talk a bit about uh, how you then could go in and uh, style that, extend it and change it and create those different building blocks. They're called Gutenberg blocks. First of all, we start off over here. You can see that it will be more complex as we go in that direction. So he's the most complex part of the presentation <laughs> just now. That's great. Yeah, this is only tech, you know, humans always, you know, they're up there still. 
We start over here with the core box. Things that we get out of the box with the Drupal Gutenberg, and it's a lot. As you can see, it's like 65 of these building blocks that you get out of the box. And you know, uh, if you do something similar uh, for other projects, you probably build like you know six, seven, or eight kind of blocks that you can build landing pages with. You know, widgets. Uh, if it's a large project with a large client, it might be like 12, 13, but then you're really pushing limits. So now, when you see that we're getting 65 out of the box, you know, already there, some people are saying, okay, I'm never gonna use this. That's way too complex. You know, this needs to work together. Now, to be fair, some of them are quite small. You know, uh, one of these blocks are a uh, title, you know, heading. Another is a uh, list, you know, number list, those kind of things. Uh, but still, the first thing we do when we start building uh, Gutenberg uh, uh, pages is to remove most of it. Get it out of there. You know, there's so many things you never need. And, you know, the 37 of them are just the embed blocks for a bunch of different services. Oh, it's, you know, uh, the regular ones that you probably need. YouTube, Vimeo, Twitter, and all of that kind of things. But then there's a lot of other services as well. So we just turn it off so we don't have to worry about some content creator feeling like, yeah, well, what I'm working, this is a this is a verse, yeah, I'll use the verse block, you know, and then we never style that, and then you have it going. And, you know, so we start there, and yeah, it's a lot, so beware. And then in addition to that, when it gets a bit more complex, we also have Drupal blocks. Every Drupal block on your site can be activated and fetched in Gutenberg in the editor. Now you just go to the content type that you have a Gutenberg editor on, and there's a checkbox for an every one of them. You just tick the ones you want, and then it works. When you go into Gutenberg, and you'll find it in the block list there. So now that could be, it could be a view block, it could be a, a web form, or it could be whatever. Next you could do with that is of course, you know, work with this in the theme layer. You could style it, obviously, so it you know, matches the rest of the design, on purpose, it starts, you know, right after the core blocks here because, well, you you get some styling out of the box here also, uh, but you know, let's be fair, you want to do more. <coughs> and in addition to that, you have a YAML configuration file for your Gutenberg setup. Now, this is really powerful because, uh, and I, we do that all the time. I, I don't think we've ever recently, I you know, set up a, a, a Drupal site with Gutenberg without doing some configuration, because what you can do here is to, for example, say that, you know, yeah, people should obviously be able to write text paragraphs, but maybe not set the text color to be pink. You know, maybe not. No, we don't want that. So the free select color, yeah, it's there. So when you install Gutenberg, it's in demo mode, you know, you can play around, but you know, you can also restrict it. And in addition to that, and this is quite new. It's a concept in Gutenberg called patterns. And basically, uh, Marco will explain how we do it. It's, it's quick to set up. But it's about uh, taking all of these smaller building blocks, building out layouts, and then saving that in your configuration so that we can reuse that as a more complex block. So now we're sort of moving, moving a bit uh, further into the depth here. <laughs> Another concept uh, that uh, Marco will show later is uh, something called dynamic blocks. Uh, and uh, what we mean by that is uh, a way to sort of override and extend the markup for a core block that you, you know, borrow down here so that you can make that uh, match the CSS structure of your, of your site, for example, or you just want to yeah, restructure the markup somehow. And then, as a last, of course, we have the custom blocks. And there, you know, the, the, the possibilities are endless. You know, you can build whatever you want. Uh, we have um, uh, created custom blocks that, uh, for example, for uh, larger media houses, uh, just, you know, when you add it into a page, you can search in, a, in an external database, a DAM system maybe, or our product in from a PIM, and then that fetches straight in, and you could choose the different layouts that you want to have available and do all of those kind of things and make sure that they're not they're not able to do something that they shouldn't. So all in all, on the top here, well, we have the typical front end. Uh, also, the, the blocks down here, they come with styling and so on, so that should also probably be up here. But, you know, in the bottom here, these are the different kinds of blocks that we build these things with. 
Now uh, let's move straight into the patterns. Okay, so uh, Torunde already gave an overview of the, the patterns. Uh, so block patterns are pre-made, ready to use layouts uh, that, that are made up of Gutenberg blocks. They let you easily create a complex layout of blocks in a matter of seconds and save it like a template. It lets, it let, it lets us uh, easily nest or group blocks. You can then use these patterns anywhere on your website to recreate repeating sections uh, with minimal effort. Uh, block patterns are defined in a theme or costume module using Gutenberg's YAML configuration file. Let's see how it works. <coughs> so here the idea is to create a pattern with some layout that will be used to show future speakers. First, we start with a blank page so we can build our pattern. It will be a section with a title and a three column grid and on each column, um, it will hold the speaker name, profile picture, and some text, and also a button at the bottom. Here, I'm just filling the first column, then I copy paste, copy paste uh, to other columns. After this is done, I'll just select the, all the content and copy it. Now we go to the configuration file. Um, in this case, located on the custom theme called DrupalCon. And here I already set up the pattern configuration with some properties. Um, and I'll just paste the copied Gutenberg HTML into patterns content property. Just need a little adjustment for indentation. Okay. Now we are ready to use the pattern. Um, so let's do this uh, by editing an existing page, uh, for example. All I need to do is go to the inserter sidebar. Uh, you notice the patterns tab next to the blocks. And now I just drag and drop to edit the blocks. Um, yeah. And now I just fill with my uh, information or data that I want. Uh, I set the title, fill the data. Uh, in this <coughs> case, it's this. And I can also, you know, style the, the button, if I want. And we could do this more advanced also, you know, making sure that all the buttons are in line, and you know, this is just a out of the core box. Yeah. yeah. And also note that uh, patterns can be grouped by categories, uh, which make, uh, makes it easy for the content editor to find them on the insert. Okay, so we're almost done. Um, and we just need to save it. And we are done. Cool. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> okay. Uh, sometimes you have a block. It could be a core block or, or a custom one. Uh, but if you want to override its markup structure for some reason, uh, it could be adding a class to it or that it matches the, <coughs> the CSS structure of your site or to fully restructure the block's markup. Well, you could copy that core block and make it a custom block, but then you would need to maintain it. So Gutenberg offers a way to do this restructuring through a concept called dynamic blocks. I'll show you how. So you just need to go to the uh, Gutenberg's configuration file and add that section, dynamic blocks, and under it, you just define which blocks you want to override. In this case, yeah, in this case, I'm just using the core uh, list block. So that's basically just a bullet list, right? Exactly. And then you need to create a template uh, right there. So you create it on, on your theme folder. Yeah. <laughs> and there, uh, and there you have the template. So there are several template variables that are uh, available. Uh, in this case, we are just using block content. So as it is, it will just render the block as it is. But what I really want to do is to add a wrapper uh, to that block content. So I'll just add the div, a div with the, some class. And 
then when rendering, you can see that it will yeah, add the wrapper. Um, just a few comments on the dynamic blocks. Uh, when you do this, it will instantly apply the template to all of all of your pages and content using this block. Um, this changes does not render within the Gutenberg editor, um, and but this is a quite easy way of doing these tweaks if you are a, develop, a Drupal developer, uh, because you can fix it in uh, in a non-React way. Uh, in addition, Gutenberg features versioning of blocks. Uh, this is powerful and great when you improve your blocks, but also requires work. If you use the dynamic block uh, concept for the change, you avoid the deprecated block handling. Yeah. <coughs> now let's uh, look at another um, uh, new feature, which uh, works uh, quite handy, and that is the uh, duotone filter. And it basically uh, works like this. I'll just uh, give an example here with uh, drag, dragging a photo in here. Uh, here we go, and that uh, loads. I'll just uh, center it, clean up like this. And up here, I have an option called Duotone, where I can choose that uh, this should be a black and white uh, photo, uh, colors, like this. You know, it, uh, it, it works nicely. Uh, and of course then, these colors also are something that I'm able to define uh, in the configuration, right? So that you could basically play around with your designer, say that, okay, for, yeah, for this content type, you know, for those images, uh, we could just uh, add that, those colors as a default, maybe, and uh, the, the user could choose to turn it off, for example. Yeah, things like that. Um, <coughs> another thing, next thing is uh, cropping out of the box. Uh, same here. This is just a, a simple installation. And I could uh, take the same photo, uh, go in here and say I want uh, cropping. So I could you know, either uh, scroll or just uh, pinch zoom like this. Let's focus on uh, yeah, that car back there. Uh, I could also go in and say that I want uh, to switch it to other, you know, kind of uh, landscape format or some square or yeah, whatever. I'll keep my original for this one, uh, and then I just um, apply. Um, yeah, what what actually happens then? It that it uh, it's because the previous picture you saw there, it was you know not really fully sharp because I've set up to use a an image style that was quite low resolution. So now when I crop, it fetches the original, crops it properly, creates a new file, uh, and saves that. So it's not really just you know CSS covering overflow, but it's actually serving something. And then, of course, you could just use image styles on that to make sure that you serve what the, the user really needs. Uh, yeah, and again, it's nice to be able to do this, but sometimes you don't want to do that, and then the configuration kicks in. So as you've seen throughout this presentation, most features and customizations um, were enabled by using Gutenberg's YAML configuration file that you can set on any theme or module. You can also customize things like restrict the available font sizes, colors, uh, base colors, gradient colors, and as um, Torander mentioned, the duotone colors. Um, you can set which text format options are available for the editor. And some core blocks come with predefined uh, styles, but you can also override them and or just add add more to them. Um, you can restri restrict which uh, blocks are available for the theme, and in this way overriding the settings on the content type. And as we've seen, this is where we set the patterns. Okay, so. Drupal Gutenberg at its core is a text editor, pretty much like CK editor. And like CK editor, the content is saved as HTML. Of course, the generated content can be more complex using Gutenberg, 
when using blocks like roof columns or any other block that affects the, the layout. Uh, but even so, we believe that the advantages of storing the content in this way outweighs the disadvantages. Sorry. Using the field mapping functionality with templates, we can solve the cases where Drupal fields are bl blended in the content. You can learn more about field mapping at Drupal Gutenberg's uh, documentation at drupal.org. Although there's this one use case where we need structured data, headless or decouple applications. When building a decouple application, it's very likely to be more useful to have the information structure so that all the front end we have uh, at the, the front end we have more flexibility in building the UI. Okay, so let's say you're building your front end app with any JavaScript frame framework, for example, Next.js. In your GS app, you can import a parse function from this light WordPress package called Log Serialization Default Parser. That's a long <laughs> name. So this parse function uh, will take the Gutenberg formatted HTML taken, for example, uh, from Drupal's JSON API uh, node endpoint as a parameter and return a JavaScript object representing the content blocks. In the next versions of Gutenberg, we will work on integrating the structured information of the blocks in the endpoints of the nodes available in the core module JSON API. This is the current uh, JSON output from the no node endpoint, and the, as you can see, the value is just HTML, kind of. <laughs> and this is the initial draft uh, of the JSON output we want to integrate with the node endpoint. Uh, this structure output will help a lot when consuming this data for a headless application. In re recent months, we have seen some movements in the Drupal community towards the adoption of JSON fields uh, already available on my SQL. Um, we'll be watching uh, its progress and if we see that brings value, we will certainly adopt it. So we were talking like yeah. outputting. Yeah, um, just, just a comment to that because yep. you, you said that uh, you know uh, some of the last things there are that are like plans in the future, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, serving that uh, that uh, JavaScript object for a decoupled setup is already it something that can be yeah, done. Yeah, it's already available. Yeah. You just need to use that uh, package yeah. and that function from the package. So, and let me introduce you to this very handy tool, uh, Gutenberg Converter. Uh, this command line. Uh, tool converts generic HTML uh, to Gutenberg blocks formatted uh, HTML. This tool is very useful for migrations. For example, converting content from a Drupal 7 site to a Drupal 9 site with Gutenberg enabled. And just a little word on the custom block development. Um, when doing uh, custom block development, one of the things that annoyed me uh, a bit uh, was to set up a Webpack. So I'm not sure he, any developer that already work uh, with Webpack here in the room. Yeah. yeah okay. Oh, 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 for this case or any bundler for a, uh, I mean, uh, it, it was a, a bit hard you know, time-consuming tasks to set up Webpack or any other bundler uh, into a project. Um, but a few months back, uh, I've discovered Laravel Mix. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I know we are what you're thinking. Uh, no, we are not bringing Laravel to Drupal. Not at all. Uh, Laravel Mix just has Laravel in its name uh, because it was developed. Well, by the Laravel team. Um, Mix is an uh, opinionated uh, wrapper for Webpack. It comes configured to cover most cases on development. Okay, let me show you 
just a quick example. Um, so to work with Laravel Mix, you just need to install Mix as a dev dependency because it's an NPM package. And then create this simple configuration pipeline uh, into a file name called webpack.mix.js. Um, so from this example, you see I'm declaring some external variables like React, taking the index.js file as source, um, compiling React to JSX, compiling the CSS, and even using browser sync for live reloads on your Drupal development so site. <coughs> when running this script, Mix will handle all the dependencies, so you don't have to worry about it. Of course, there are many tools out there uh, that you can also use for custom development, uh, custom block development, but I find uh, Mix to be a quite simple tool uh, to use and allows me to save time on the project setup. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. We got a bit, you know, deep into the technical parts there. Luckily, there were a bunch of uh, developers here already. So, phew, that was, you know, never easy to know. But, um, well, our summarized takeaway from this session is probably that, um, well, for all the Drupal websites that we've been uh, setting up for the last years, we always have set up Gutenberg. It's not like a policy, you know, we're not forcing it on anyone, but we always do it, you know? And why? Well, it's uh, working really well, you know? People like it, uh, it's uh, stable, uh, and uh, uh, it's very great for a typical, especially, you know, marketing departments that has a lot of content creators, and they need that for their everyday work. That's really important. Um, and yeah, there are things to learn, you know? It's been a learning curve also for us. And uh, part of this session also is trying to sort of help a lot of you developers out there to be effective, getting this thing to work as easy as possible uh, and to sort of help you in the right direction for uh, getting quickly up and running with this. Um, we are doing an onboarding uh, program. It's a paid, uh, it's a paid service, uh, but uh, a business uh, owner um, that uh, you know might be thinking should we go in this way? Uh, this is definitely the most effective way for your company to get up to speed with what you need to know about uh, Drupal Gutenberg. Uh, some of the concepts here, um, <coughs> yeah, and uh, some of the sessions that we'll run through in the beginning of that, uh, and of course there will probably be. Uh, equally, you know, amount of levels and experience from have you used React before or not and so on. So uh, uh, we need to talk through that and set up something that works for your team, if that's uh, interesting at some point. Um, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> so yeah, I know that there are some questions, uh, so that's great. Just uh, before people also feel that you know this was long enough, uh, there is a buff uh, going on uh, to discuss the next steps uh, right now at uh, 5.15. So it would be super great to have some of you there to be able to discuss these things further. Um, also, in the beginning there, there was this uh, survey where it would be great to get some feedback from you and maybe leave an email address so we have someone to reach out when you want to communicate and have dialogue about the decisions being made. Um, and uh, yeah, just we can just leave that there. Feel free to reach out, of course, and let's do some questions. Okay. Hello. So we're going to start with the questions from the app, and then we'll go to the floor. Um, question from the app. Can you optimize image sizes when uploading through Gutenberg? Uh, Drupal Gutenberg, uh, if, for example, the media uh, module uh, and media library is enabled, Gutenberg will use the media uh, mo module uh, by default. Um, so it will be all handled by the media module. Yeah. So that's a yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Questions from the floor? Hands up. Uh, when you created this uh, cropped image, uh, how is it that stored? Is it a file 
uh, entity and link to the node. So when I delete the node, the file is removed or um, yep. how else you solve yep. it? Exactly. Uh, the image copying, when you do the image copying, it will create a new file entity and it will work like a file entity. So uh, it will create as a temporary uh, until the node is saved, of course. Uh, just one note regarding, because on the Duoton filter, we kind of missed that it's not, uh, for the Duoton filter, it's not creating an image, it's just an SVG filter that applies to the image. So, two answers for that question. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Three, Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hey. Uh, could I use responsive image styles with Gutenberg? I'm asking because uh, if I want to use like WebP images, I need to use responsive image styles. Uh, again, you can use the media module. Uh, and media module uh, with together with the responsive images uh, module, I think, uh, or the responsive uh, module with will handle the the. the Responsiveness. Okay. <laughs> Hi. <coughs> How much do I do? I need to learn my to to do this. I need to learn React. So should I learn my React developers Drupal or should I learn my Drupal developers React? Like where's the line? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Well, uh, I mean. I think that uh, most of our developers, at least, uh, started off uh, from the Drupal landscape. Yeah. And uh, actually, through some of the tools that you use when you start working on, uh, on Gutenberg blocks, uh, you'll sort of get what you need out of the box. It's a very good way, actually, to, uh, to learn React. You learn React that way. Yeah, yeah. of course. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely doable. And, uh, yeah, you sort of get the structure there quite quickly, even though you know. I shouldn't be the one to answer that question. <laughs> uh, yeah, my question is, uh, does the Drupal Gutenberg project, do they follow updates to the Gutenberg itself? Like for example, when WordPress 6 uh, was released with some enhancements to the block editor, mm -hmm. uh, do those things flow down to this project? Well, we try to, uh, okay. yeah, because yeah, you know, WordPress Gutenberg has this big team, so they keep, and they are kind of not afraid to just release uh, new versions. Yep. So it's kind of hard to keep up with them. So we try like to wait for like a big set of features ca came out, uh, so we do the updates in Drupal Gutenberg. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very for the very inspiring um, presentation. Um, I have a question. Uh, when you have a Drupal website which is, which is structured with paragraphs and maybe nested paragraphs, um, how, would you recommend <laughs> how would you recommend to bring Gutenberg into the website? Because I think it's not the solution to bring just uh, the, 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 the uh, Gutenberg um, UI into the, the paragraphs. There must be a way to use, par uh, to use Gutenberg as a whole and Yep. Might rate those yeah. paragraphs into the website, but yeah, it sounds very complicated. I would say. Yeah, w we uh, you can take the tech part, uh, but uh, uh, well, we've been talking about several uh, ways of doing that. You know, first it's uh, you, yeah, you need to migrate somehow, but for uh, uh, for uh, a couple of cases, we're sort of building a, a side by side way of uh, uh, using this. So if you have like a paragraphs. Set up uh, or uh, f from earlier, we have an additional body field that we use for for Gutenberg, and then you're actually able to switch back and forth, and you could sort of port the HTML from those blocks into Gutenberg, and then from there, you know, we'll just go, and at some point that will do will be like a a cleanup to where we leave uh, paragraphs behind, uh, some for the end. But uh, you also mentioned like uh, nested blocks. And that is uh, is so much easier with Gutenberg, you know, because of all of the performance issues and, and translations and everything like that. That's like, oh well, it's just a body field, so that's super performant and easy to handle in that way. But there, there will be... The problem is that you have it, not the migration. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good point. Yeah. Anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I was like thinking of a, a way to, to kind of migrate a paragraph's content 
so Drupal would be like taking the outputs HTML from paragraphs mm -hmm. and go through that uh, that tool that yeah. I've showed the Gutenberg converter mm -hmm. and it, it will try to uh, you know it's just HTML so we will try to convert to Gutenberg yeah. HTML. You've, you've had some statistics slide, uh, and there was also a number of pages created using uh, Gutenberg. How exactly is this number calculated? Is there any tracking code or something? Uh, that's from the WordPress communities, you know. So, th so that's Gutenberg in it. Uh, yeah. So those uh, those uh, eighty million doesn't include the three thousand Drupal sites. <laughs> so <laughs> no, but uh, and um, I think the, the the site that delivers this every day is called Gutenstats.org or something like that. And I think they explain somehow how they get the stats. Uh, but uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, uh, behind you, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, first of all, nice uh, speech, nice uh, pre presentation. Uh, I've used Gutenberg myself on uh, a couple of new projects, but as far as I see, uh, Drupal uses a lot the new, uh, the it's not new theme, but you know it, the theme gene for the backend. And uh, this theme is really cool, and we are using it a lot. And it's still, I see that Gutenberg has a, a big lack of uh, compatibility with the other themes mm -hmm. than the one it came mm -hmm. from the box. Yeah, that's nice. It, it, it looks even uh, better than default Drupal themes. I, ad I, I admit it. But what do you plan to do with the compatibility issues that are still right now on Drupal.org? Because I monitor it also for myself. Yeah. And again, about the complex elements like Exposed uh, view blocks, uh, exposed paginators, uh, paginators, uh, faces, mm, edge stuff, and stuff like that, which is conflicting with the GS. Mm -hmm. How can you provide something like more, I don't know, stable here? Mm. Thank you. Do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's actually a contrib module which is called uh, Jin Gutenberg that he could use that is um, maintainer sitting in the front row. So blame him. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's uh, it's it's trying to solve the the usability issues that yeah. uh, we see when using uh, Jin and Gutenberg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well yeah, and it's very good. We use the exact same uh, module for all our setups. So we use Jin and the, the Jin Gutenberg uh, module. Hi, uh, thanks Hi. for pre the presentation. I haven't used Gutenberg myself, but it looks really nice. I understand that the integration with Drupal entities is working well. So for example, when you drag and drop the image, it's creating a media entity, right? Yeah. So now I'm wondering, I think this is a two-fold question. So how well integrated is with entities like uh, uh, the, the coming from layout builder, or even does it make sense uh, mixing these two uh, tools, or is a completely different approach? I, I see the the, yeah. the benefit of using, for example, you explain patterns, so that will completely replace the the need of, of yeah. layout builder, for example. Yeah. But then yeah. my concern would be how well integrated is Gutenberg with the Drupal entities? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, again, uh, it's it's a text editor, so all those. Uh, integrations are basically with the uh, media and we probably have some uh, third party modules that allows you to imp uh, insert for example uh, nodes into the the editor um, but that's about it uh, there were some discussions about integrating with layout builder but can't do anything <laughs> we can't do more you know. All right. Yep. Our time is up, I think. Yep. So uh, thank you so much. I hope to see you at the buff. <laughs> <laughs>